Let's go and let's go and do some exciting stunt work on the train roof. And she goes, and I'd be going, yeah. And she and she goes, I can't do that. And he goes, you know, get up there, you stupid girl. And she gets up there and she stands upright on this train and she goes, oh. And the wind is blowing her hair very beautifully like this. She just spends the whole movie complaining. I mean, I'd be going, yes. did I think of Sylvester McCoy? Well, I did think he was <laughs> a wonderful actor, a very good friend, somebody brilliant to work with, and I still do. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, um, he, he's great. Oh, I know what I was talking about, Remembrance of the Daleks, and this fits in quite well, because my first uh, story as the assistant was obviously a bit scary, and, and um, I was kind of, I was very much still finding the character and sorting out what exactly you did on television because uh, I hadn't had that much experience and uh, sort of, you know, finding where the camera was pointing at and things, basic things like that. And uh, people were very, very helpful. And especially Sylvester, who was uh, wonderful to, to be with because he really, he, he's got this knack of being able to make you laugh in the most kind of awkward situation. Um, by doing something really stupid or, you know, and, uh, and that worked really well. And the rest of the cast were also great fun to work with. Yes? I uh, have three questions. One, is Harry Bell really as boring as Survival made out to be? Two, uh, how do you like working with a baby in the first December? Have you ever worked with a baby before? And three, uh, are we ever going to find out what they should in this? Right, first question is, Perry Bell really is boring as it seems to be in survival. I, I have been um, berated by fans who live in Perry Bell <laughs> <laughs> who say to me, you know, it's a marvellous place. When we actually went to Perry Bell, I'd never actually been there before, even though it's a stone's throw from the BBC rehearsal rooms. Perry Bell is the kind of place you go through on the way out of London and you don't really want to stop. Um, it is, the, it is a sort of very much uh, suburbia, um, nothing ever goes on. Mind you, I was absolutely astounded by the, the beautiful, it's called Horsington Hill, where we did a lot of the filming, which is this beautiful sort of hill right in the middle of a sort of council estate, um, with trees and grass and quite unusual for London. So, um, yes, it's certainly got its boring bits, but it's also uh, quite picturesque. Second question, did, how did I enjoy working with the baby in... Uh, Curse of Fenry. No, I'd never worked with a baby before, but um, I mean, I'd had you know, contact with babies, so at least I knew which way up it went. And things like that. <laughs> it, it was actually uh, the poor baby, I felt slightly sorry for it because it was in fact a boy. Um, so it played its first drag role at the age of six, six months. Um, it was an absolutely wonderful baby. John Nathan Turner had actually chosen it because. It's the, a, the baby from Bush Pub in, um, in, in Shepherd's Bush, where John spends quite a, a, a number of hours of, of each day socialising and sort of making contacts. And um, he, he, the baby was very used to being passed around to other people, very used to loud noises, very used to being in a kind of uh, strange atmosphere. And um, so they reckoned it would be rather a good baby to, to have on location. And it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how the poor child's going to grow up, probably with a very warped imagination. Sort of, I, I hope babies don't remember too much from that age with all these hemovores hanging about. But one, one thing that I was slightly annoyed with was that it was very, very bad weather when we did Curse of Fenric. Um, Ian had originally written it with the idea that it would be shot in June, I think. So he'd done all these nice little scenes, swimming in water, and, and uh, sort of I was wearing this nice 1940s gear and stuff. When it actually came to it, uh, they rescheduled it for the first one of the year. So it was in fact filmed in March and April. And it's a bit of a cold time of year in England. And one day, it was absolutely pouring with rain. And when it wasn't pouring with rain, the visual effects guys had to match it up by, by uh, sprinklers all over the time. And uh, but by the time we got to the scene where I run across um, from the window of the hut where we escaped from with the baby to the car, 
Um, and say goodbye to um, Kathleen, is it? Gosh, I can't remember maybe her grandma's name. <laughs> um, it was actually a morass of sort of slippery mud. And at one point, I, uh, I, I was running with this baby. I mean, God knows why we weren't using just a doll at that point, because he couldn't see. Um, and I actually slipped with, with the baby. I, I, I felt myself, you know, just <laughs> like that. And I mean, it's really funny how your instincts just, because I was already just, to, you know, full flat on my back with, you know, the baby. And uh, I sort of automatically knew what, what to do. But luckily, I didn't fall over. But I mean, I, I do, I did feel a bit angry about that. And then, but the only time in the whole shoot that it cried was that scene where, um, it suddenly, it was fast asleep, this baby. We passed it out the window. I ran across this ground with people shouting and screaming and everything. It was absolutely fast asleep. And then we got up to the car door and um, the sprinklers were, obviously, were on us. And it was freezing cold water. And the, the, the water was falling on Aaron's face. And he woke up and, and started crying. Because, of course, what I think anybody would really. <laughs> I mean, I was crying. So. <laughs> But it was great. I mean, I, I adore babies and children, and uh, it was a great thrill working working with baby. And what was the third person? Oh yes, Ace's surname. Um, no, we never got to know really, did we? We know about Dorothy, um, and I've since had lots of letters from Dorothy's saying, you know, what's wrong with the name Dorothy? <laughs> but uh, no, we never.
Leeds, that's right, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is about sort of 300 miles north of London, which is a long way for us Brits, but you know, you get in the car and go out for a pizza and return 300 miles later. <laughs> um, anyway, we were in Leeds and apparently uh, Sylvester was asked to go on World at One, which is a, a Radio 4 programme, which, I mean, Radio 4 is the programme there, they all speak like this, and uh, it's terribly cultural. And I, I listen to it all the time, and it's got this wonderful radio soap opera on it called The Archers, which has been going for years and years. And when I was little, I, my, I could never understand why my mother used to listen to it, and now I listen to it all the time. It's brilliant. It's got the most wonderful theme tune. And uh, one of our comics said that, said that why, didn't, why did we have such a boring national anthem? The national anthem really should be this theme tune from The Archers. <laughs> Quite a lot. <laughs> no, I, I do remember her very well. I, 
I was saying earlier, I don't remember any specific stories. I just remember the atmosphere and I remember, uh, I remember Joe Grant as well. Um, and I, I, I just remember the atmosphere, the atmosphere really, but I do remember saying that. Yeah. And I met Liz Slayton uh, about a year ago and it was great, it was like a mutual, mutual appreciation society. She said, oh, I love your character in Doctor Who and I said, oh, I loved your character in Doctor Who. <laughs>
three episodes of Doctor Who, brilliant. You know, I've never done any telly before, I've never even been into a television studio. And, uh, and she rang back and she said, oh yes, they're, they're thinking of having a new Doctor Who's assistant. Bonnie's not, Bonnie Lampard's not quite sure what she's going to do next year. And they, they would very much like to have an option on you as the new Doctor Who assistant. So I went... <laughs>
in fact, somebody asked me that at the Chicago convention, what I thought of coming over here and working. And you know, it's, it's a, it, it's, it would be jolly nice to think that I could come over and uh, you know try and get a job over here. Anyway, apart from that, um, oh, I, I was going to do a pilot for a game show, which has been cancelled because the TV company didn't have enough money. Um, I have done a project called Saffron, which you might have heard of. Um, it's a kind of animated cartoon for kind of older viewers, uh, which is possibly going to be shown on the programme called Death Two, which is a very trendy programme, which I'll be very pleased about, which is a kind of cartoony thing, but pick photographs of me. Um, it's very difficult to explain. But, uh, and also, I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff for children's radio, um, teaching kids about singing and music, which is great fun. But in fact, for the first time for a long time, I don't know what I'll be doing uh, after the end of January, so which is quite exciting, I find. Um, but I just, I hope something comes up. <laughs> Otherwise, I have to come and live over here. Wouldn't that be yeah. <laughs> I think we can arrange that. Yes. Sophie Aldrin.